Welcome to the online video series presented by Structure Studios. We'll pick up right where we ended in the basic drawing video. The next tool is the Outline tool. Outline allows you to draw a new shape using an existing shape as a guide. The tool works in three steps. Each time you click, you're telling the program a different piece of information to draw your shape. We'll head to the Planner stage to create a planner around our hardscape. Let's activate the Outline tool. When the cursor enters the 2D grid, the cursor has a question mark. This indicates that an existing shape needs to be chosen. Step 1 is to click on the shape you'd like to outline. So we'll click on the hardscape. Now our cursor has an arrow between a dotted line and a solid line. Step 2 is to determine the offset. As we move our cursor away from the edge of the shape, an orange line with the offset distance appears. Let's move the offset to 3 feet from the top left corner of the hardscape and then left click. Step 3 is to draw the new shape. We'll trace around the entire hardscape. When we get back to the original point, left click to complete the planner. The hotkey for the outline tool is the letter D. Let's take a look at our planner in 3D. We'll right click our planner and press the View in 3D button on the right click menu. Our planner looks great, but we actually want to create a larger planner bed area. Let's head back to 2D by pressing the 2D 3D button and delete the planner we just created to start a new one. Now activate the Outline tool by pressing D. Left click on the hardscape to use it as a guide. Just like before, we'll offset by 3 feet. Starting at the top left corner of the shape, we'll trace the outline to the right across the top down the right side, and to the left across the bottom until we come to the bottom left-hand corner. We'll click here to stop tracing the outline. We can freely switch between tools to modify the shape of the outline. Let's switch to the Line tool by pressing the letter A. We'll draw to the left 3 feet and left click, and then draw up 9 feet and left click. Now, switch back to the Outline tool by pressing the letter D. Once we click the hardscape, the software has already guessed the segment we want to draw, so all we have to do is trace from our current point to the first point we drew. That's it! Now our planner is complete! The next tool is the Divide tool. Divide allows you to add additional points to the existing shapes to edit them. The right side of our planner matches the hardscape, but we'd like it to match the left side. To edit our planner, we first need to delete the segments we want to change. Using our mouse wheel, zoom in to the bottom right corner. Activate the Move tool by pressing the letter Q. Then select the 3 foot 10 inch segment by clicking on the midpoint. Midpoints are hollow squares, while endpoints are solid. When we click on the midpoint, the segment turns orange. Now when we press Delete, just that segment is deleted. If we click on the grid and deselect the planner, our planner will turn red. Red tells us that we have an incomplete shape and it will not appear in 3D. We'll select our planner again to continue working on it. So far we've deleted one segment. Now we need to change the arc on the right. If we click the dotted radius line, we'll select the arc and the arc turns orange. If we click delete right now, the entire arc will be deleted but we only want to delete half of it. This is the perfect time to use the Divide tool. Let's activate the Divide tool and add a point. Using our mouse wheel, we'll zoom into the arc. Left click on the line of the arc and create a new point halfway across. The arc is now divided into two 6 foot 3 inch segments. If our Divide point is not in the right spot, select the Move tool and adjust the location. The hotkey for the Divide tool is the letter F. Each segment has its own radius line. Click on the radius line of the lower arc and then press Delete. With our mouse wheel, we'll zoom out until we see the whole shape. Now we'll activate the Line tool to complete our planner. The open endpoints have turned orange. When you select an incomplete shape and activate the Line, Arc, or Outline tool, the software will highlight the open endpoints in orange. This makes it easy to connect incomplete shapes. We'll left click on the endpoint at the bottom of our half arc. Draw down 9 feet and left click. 
Now we can draw to the left three feet. Or, because of the orange target line, we can press Enter to finish the shape. Our planter is now complete. We can also extend the bottom of our planter with the Move tool. Activate the Move tool and click and hold the midpoint of the 32-foot segment. Remember, the midpoint is the hollow square. As we drag our mouse down, the sides of the planter will lengthen. We'll do this until the segments are 12 feet. Now let's take a look at our planner in 3D. We'll right-click our planner and press the View in 3D button on the right-click menu. Our planner looks great. Let's head back to 2D and review a few of the other options available on the right-click menu. This menu gives you easy access to the most commonly used buttons and tools. Convert Shape is a quick way to change the type of shape you drew. Maybe you drew a hardscape and then noticed you were in the planter stage. Right-click makes it easy to convert the planter to a hardscape, even when in the planter stage. Or maybe after you finish drawing a planter, you decide you'd like to edit the coping on your deck. No problem! Just right-click on the deck and jump instantly to the hardscape stage. The right-click menu also makes it easy to turn on and off your snaps, add callouts, or lock shapes in place. As you design, you'll often use the Move tool. Move allows you to not only move items, but also to select them. In order to use the controls in the panel and get calculations for each shape, you must have a shape selected. Let's select our hardscape with the Move tool and then click on the Smart Data tab to access the calculations. Smart Data tells us the area, perimeter, height, and other values of our shape. As we mouse over each option, the area being calculated is highlighted in green in both 2D and 3D. To keep the highlight active, just press the green eye next to the category. We'll close Smart Data for now. To learn more about Smart Data, make sure to watch the Smart Data video. As you create your design elements, you may also need to calculate distances between objects, such as the distance between the new hardscape and the house. For this, you'll use the Measure tool. Activate the Measure tool and left-click to start your measurement on the bottom right side of the hardscape. As you move your mouse, a double arrow will appear to display the distance between the two points. Let's move our mouse down to add a measure guide of 10 feet. Once the measurement is in place, we can shorten or lengthen the distance with the Move tool. Press the letter Q to activate Move and left-click the bottom arrow to extend the measurement to 12 feet. When a shape is a combination of lines and arcs, the Measure tool is very helpful to calculate the overall length and width. Press the letter C to activate the Measure tool. We'll start our measurement in the center of the arc on the left side and measure straight across to the arc on the right side. Now we can see the length of our shape is 26 feet. Once the measurement is in place, we can also move the measure line with the Move tool by holding down our left mouse button and moving our mouse. This will create dotted lines on either side of the measurement, showing that it's offset. The hotkey for the Measure tool is the letter C. The next tool gives us the ability to add text to our design in both 2D and 3D. Activate the Text tool and left-click in the 2D grid to create a text block. We'll use the keyboard to enter text. When we enter text in 2D, it will appear on our 2D plan. When we enter text in 3D, it will appear in our 3D presentation. Towards the bottom of the panel, you also have a section for labels and guides. The first guide is Callout. The Callout tool will automatically add the object name and material name of any drawn shape or library item. With the Move tool, we'll select our hardscape. Once the hardscape is selected, the Callout button will light up, showing we can add a callout. We'll click the button to add a callout to our hardscape. The name that appears in the callout corresponds to the name under Object Information. We can update this name at any time. The next tool, Label, allows you to move a measurement to any location on the shape or even away from the shape. 
Let's select our hardscape again and activate the Label tool. Our cursor will show a line with numbers as we enter the 2D grid. Hover your mouse over any measurement. The number will turn orange. Hold down your left mouse button to move the measurement to a new location. The last two guides are Rectangle and Circle. These can be added to your design to create guidelines when you need to mark an overall envelope. These lines are only seen in 2D. We'd like to add a curving walkway, so we'll use the rectangle guide to mark the area. First, we'll pan the view of the grid by holding down the scroll wheel on our mouse. Then select the rectangle guide and left-click on the bottom arrow of our 12-foot measure line. We'll pull down 6 feet and right 30 feet and left-click to set the guide in place. Let's use our freehand tool to create the path. The freehand tool works like drawing with a pencil on paper. As long as you hold down left click while moving the mouse, the freehand tool will draw lines and arcs following your cursor. Activate the freehand tool and left click in the left corner of our rectangle guide to start our walkway. Holding down the left mouse button will draw to the right, within the confines of our rectangle. As soon as we release the left mouse button, our line will stop. Two lines are created, a white line and a purple line. The purple line is what we drew, and the white line shows how the software auto-corrected and smoothed our lines. In the panel, we can use the freehand arc slider to show fewer or more curves. As we adjust the slider, our purple line remains the same, while the white line updates. We'll use the outline tool to complete our walkway. With our freehand line still selected, we'll activate the Outline tool. The large orange points at the end of the line indicate that the shape can be completed right from that spot. We want our walkway to be 3 feet wide, so we'll press 3 on the keyboard. Our walkway is now 3 feet wide, and we simply press Enter to complete it. We encourage you to watch the stage videos next. Thanks for watching. For more information, please visit structurestudios.com slash help.